relationship between the clinical and histological features in periodontal pocket so before going into this uh, interesting aspect of correlating the clinical and histological features which is one of the favorite area when i used to prepare in my final year uh, you have to make a note of one important thing about the periodontal pocket periodontal pockets are chronic inflammatory lesions so they are of chronic time they they cannot be seen as an acute time they are chronic time and they always undergoes repair repair is something which is always there in the periodontal pocket and make a note periodontal pockets never have complete healing means one side they will have destruction and other side they will have construction construction is a body mechanism Aras destruction is the mechanism by the leftover bacteria which are present in that area. So that is called as a combination of both. It means it always try to repair, but there is some sort of destruction. So there is no complete healing in the case of periodontal pocket, right? So the next important aspect that you have to make a note is about the correlation ship between these. Okay. So the clinical feature is whenever you have a gingival wall of the pocket having various degree of bluish red discoloration okay you'll have the smooth shiny surface which pits on pressure and everything so what correlated histological feature you can appreciate is the discoloration is basically due to the stagnation of circulation means blood statuses okay and if you see the shiny and shiny smooth uh, atrophy surface okay uh, of the epithelium and there is edema the edema is the main reason for the pitting on pressure so you have pitting on pressure and pitting on pressure is basically due to the edema over that particular area the next one when you have a pink and firm color gingival wall okay so the pink and firm gingival wall gives an idea that it is a fibrotic change okay you will have a fibrotic change and sometimes what happens is uh the external appearance of the external appearance of a healthy and a inner inner wall of periodontal uh, pocket having a various degrees of degeneration and also sometimes you will have ulceration which can be seen as in a red color the next one is bleeding so bleeding is basically due to increasing in vascularity okay increasing vascularity is the primary reason for the bleeding and the second one is uh, the internal aspect of the pocket is generally painful okay when when it is painful the pain on tactile is due to the ulceration of the pocket that is the reason and when you have pus okay i mean like pus we are going to talk in detail so when you have pus pus in the pockets is due to due to giving an idea that they have some sort of inflammation this is how a clinical scenario is correlated to the histological aspect the next comes is pus and its relationship with the pocket so make a note this is a very good statement that is given in your karanza that is pus is a common feature of periodontal disease but it is only a secondary sign okay pus is a secondary sign hope we have discussed the difference between the symptoms symptoms are something which are given by the patient signs are something which are appreciated by the physician right so this is a secondary sign and make a note the nature of the inflammatory changes in the pocket wall so this pus is going to give the nature of the change in the pocket wall so it's going to give the nature of changes in the pocket wall so that is the main area where the pus is going to play a very very vital role so excessive excessive pus okay so when you when you will have when you have an excessive pus okay then you can diagnose it as a shallow pocket when you can diagnose it as a shallow pocket whereas in the case of deep pockets you have no pus or a very little pus right these are the two important points that you have to make a note excessive pus a shallow pocket whereas no pus or a little pus you can diagnose it as in a deep pocket the next important area is the mineral content of the exposed cementum so already known that whenever you have a gingival recession the cementum will get exposed right so what is the changes of mineral content in an exposed cementum the mineral content of an exposed cementum increases the first important point it increases so what are the parameters which increases in this exposed cementum or in the case of root caries exposed cementum is nothing but it will dissolve and it will lead to root caries 
so you will have increasing in the calcium you will have increasing in the magnesium you will have increasing in the phosphorus you will have increasing in the fluoride content but make a note okay but make a note the micro hardness of this cementum remains unchanged remains same micro hardness remains same whereas the calcium magnesium phosphorus and fluoride contents increases in the case of exposed cementum or root caries the next this is again an interesting area i feel like they can ask questions over this so they can give you a different areas different areas or they can ask a sequence based question that is uh, the first one is calculus okay followed by you will have some sort of attached attached plaque and followed by you will have a zone of unattached plaque followed by you will have a zone of junctional epithelium okay so junctional epithelium this zone of junctional epithelium and uh, in a normal sulcus the zone of junctional epithelium is going to be somewhere around 500 mu m whereas in the case of whereas in the case of periodontal pocket so in the periodontal pocket it is destroyed right so whenever it is destroyed it is going to be 100 mu mm uh, then you will have a semi destroyed connective tissue that is called as partially lysed connective tissue then you will have an intact connective tissue so this is a sequence so they can ask you a sequence based question or they can turn this diagram into a diagram based question so please do make a note of this particular area the next question of, of course this is this uh, most favorite question for most of you in your final year that is the difference between infra bony pocket and the supra bony pocket so uh, i i hope you can you can just understand uh, by by reading the content okay they can ask you like which of the following statement is related to infra bony pocket or which of the following statement is related to supra bony pocket let's say they can simply ask you to uh, identify the difference between infra and supra so please do make a note of this okay uh, it's completely a self explanatory aspect and the next comes is uh, the clinical future okay you can see a good periodontal abscess so we we'll learned something related to periodontal abscess the first statement an important statement of course uh, questions uh, which were given in the previous examinations uh, uh, this is a very important area periodontal pocket is also called as lateral abscess periodontal abscess is also called as lateral abscess because it is present lateral side to the tooth surface and it is also called as parietal abscess right so these are the two statements that you have to make out. So there is a difference between gingival abscess and periodontal abscess. Periodontal abscess is basically due to the deepening of the destruction. That is an extension of the periodontal pocket. Whereas gingival abscess is due to the changes in the gingiva. So that is, the, that is how you can differentiate uh, the periodontal abscess from that of the uh, gingival abscess. Okay, so don't get confused. Uh, so these are the important things that you have to make a note about these two different types of periodontal and gingival abscess okay so i'm done for now signing off dr Srikanth from team mds conquer